Hey folks, Dr. Gersmar from Aspire Natural Health. I got asked a fantastic question today and I wanted to share my answer with you. So the patient and I were sitting down discussing test results and what was going on. The patient looked at me and said, you know, everything you've said makes sense to me. And I think uh, based on the test results, like again, it makes sense and I understand what we're doing. But my question for you, the patient asked me is, why don't MDs do this? Why doesn't my MD recommend the kind of things that you recommend or follow the kind of treatment protocols that you're talking about that make so much sense to me? And the answer really comes down to two pieces. So the question is, why don't MDs do the kind of work that integrative, functional, alternative, or naturopathic doctors do? Why don't MDs do that? And the answer is there are two reasons. The first is simply that they don't have the education. Look, this isn't knocking MDs. They're incredibly smart. They're incredibly skilled. They learn a tremendous amount. The fact is, it's similar to saying to me, well, why don't you perform open heart surgery? Like, I'm aware of what it is. Theoretically, I have a very small idea of what's necessary, but I in no way have the education, the training, and the clinical experience to do open heart surgery. Coming to me to have that done is almost certain to, to be fatal right? In the same way, MDs do not get the training in holistic thinking, in nutrition, diet, lifestyle. Uh, they don't get training in supplements, herbal medicines. They don't get training in any of these things. And so it's simply unrealistic to ask an average MD about these therapies. At best, they're going to tell you, I don't know about that. At worst, they're going to respond to telling you things like, oh, that doesn't work or you shouldn't do that. When, frankly, again, most of them just don't have the education. So the first reason what you're going to find for most MDs is the reason they don't prescribe treatment plans like this or they don't use therapies like I do, they just don't know. So it's necessary if they want to do this to educate themselves. Now, clearly, any MD, being a very smart individual, is completely capable of doing this. The education is out there should they seek it. The bigger problem for MDs is that even when they're educated, they're still often not able to use the kind of tools and treatments and strategies that, that functional medicine or alternative or naturopathic doctors use. And the reason is simply this. So let me tell you that oftentimes I talk to MDs and I outline this different approach, tell them what we're doing, and they get very excited. Listen, they more than anyone see the deficits of the kind of medicine that they're practicing, and mo many of them, most of them realize that the system needs to be expanded and needs to take these other pieces into account in order to provide the kind of care that they want to give to their patients in order to give that. So they often get excited talking to us and then some of them will go out and start to get the education they need to begin to use these therapies. Then we often hear back from them in tremendous frustration that they're being shut down and not allowed to practice these therapies. So your MD may want to do the therapies, but often they're straight jacketed and prevented from doing those therapies. Why? Well, two reasons. One, the current insurance system does not pay for, reimburse, or allow these kind of therapies to be used. The therapies, you know, the, the current system is built around prescribing drugs, doing some therapies like physical therapy or some other therapies, and surgeries. We don't really have much of a place for lifestyle medicine, herbal medicine, or any of these other functional approaches under the current insurance system. So, often if an MD wants to use these therapies, they can't be paid for using these therapies. The bottom line is that in the business of medicine, if you can't get paid, your clinic's going to close, you're not going to have a job, and you're not going to be able to help people. The second, and even more insidious in many ways, is the thing known as standard of care. So, the big regulatory agencies, the big boards, the big oversight structures of most MDs have come up with what they call standards of care. Now on the surface, this sounds like a very good thing. It says, look, if you have X problem, then Y, a treatment plan, is considered appropriate 
and uh, for that particular problem. So for example, let's say you have diabetes, right? An increasingly common problem. Standard of care says once it's been detected that you have diabetes, you need to be placed on a medication. If that medication isn't sufficient, you add a second one, you add a third one, you check for other issues like high blood pressure or other conditions, and that rolls you into additional standards of care. On the positive side, the idea behind standards of care is to ensure that everyone gets appropriate and sufficient care. At least that's the theory. Now, the two other sides to standards of care are one, that if a doctor follows standards of care, they become basically immune to being sued. So, if you had diabetes, you came to see me, I followed that standard of care and put you on those medications, did those therapies, did those tests, I followed the guidelines that were given, essentially then, unless I did something really terrible or neglectful or incompetent, I'm immune from being sued. Now, let's face it. Lawsuits are a very real issue, very concerning thing. As anyone who has their own business knows, being threatened with the loss of your business, your livelihood, your ability to practice is a huge deal. Doctors, of course, are as concerned about that as anyone. None of us wants to be sued, especially when we're trying our best and doing our job. So both at an individual doctor level and then at an institutional level, so that clinic, that hospital, wherever that doctor's working, there's a strong, strong desire not to get sued or not to get into trouble. So that doctor is going to be pushed to follow that standard of care. The other side, however, is when those standards of care go from ensuring that adequate care is given to becoming straitjackets. So for example, if instead of giving that drug for diabetes, I wanted to use some herbs, or I wanted to use a therapeutic diet, or I wanted to use some other tools, that's considered not following the standard of care, right? And that then makes the doctor liable. It, as we said earlier, runs into trouble with billing so that the doctor can be paid for their services and the administrators, the bureaucrats, the people in charge of the institution, again, a clinic or a hospital or whatever, turn around and look and say that doctor is not following standard of care. Either they're going to lose some bonuses or they're going to lose their job. So at the end of the day, why don't doctors do more integrative, functional, holistic, naturopathic treatments? Why do they not recommend anything besides drugs, surgery, and some therapies? There are two reasons. First, education. A standard MD education, wonderful in many ways, smart, smart people, just doesn't cover certain topics, and these are typically one of them. Now, thankfully, that's changing, and again, any MD who is you know, dedicated to helping people and open-minded can easily seek out education and continue to train themselves on many of these therapies. The second issue that we have is really one, that insurance doesn't pay for these kind of therapies for the most part, making it difficult for doctors, clinics, and institutions to stay in practice, not go out of business because they can't make enough money. And two, standards of care, which at their heart are supposed to be a good thing about ensuring that everyone gets enough care, have become straitjackets where doctors are locked into a certain path and they can't deviate from it or else they risk losing their license and their job. So those are the reasons that most MDs, especially those who work in the system, who take insurance and are at the major institutions that most people think about are not going to recommend these integrative and holistic therapies. Hope that's helped answer that question for you and, you know, uh, give some greater understanding. I'm all for the current medical system, but for using it in a way that works, not for asking it to do something that it really can't do. That's like trying to put a square peg through a round hole. Not good for the peg, not good for the hole either. All right, folks, if you're interested in more of these integrative, functional, and naturopathic approaches, at Aspire Natural Health, we are experts at treating gut dysfunctions, autoimmune diseases, and other hard-to-treat cases. If that's you or someone you know, please 
contact us. We can schedule a complimentary 15-minute phone call with myself. We can find out if we can be of assistance to you and if we're the kind of people that you would like to work with. You'll leave that call with answers to those two questions, plus knowing what your next steps are so you can move forward towards health and well-being. All right, folks, until next time, take care.